Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk, the most fact-driven, unbiased, true crime channel. We have got an odd show for you today. Some of these stories, you just can't make this stuff up. First on the docket, R. Kelly. He's starting a trial next week, and um, it's a good opportunity to explain a rape shield statute. Second, those attorneys in St. Louis, they've been pardoned. A warden responsible for protecting Ghislaine Maxwell has been charged with murder, if you can believe that. One of the stories today, it's something you just, you can't make this stuff up. And then I have another story where literally no words. I'm just like shocked. And then finally, um, I've never ever heard of this little fetish. And then finally, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Crime Talk, and my name is Scott Reich. Thanks for watching. Now, if you haven't done so already, would you please hit that subscribe button as well as the like button, and don't forget to hit the little bell so that you receive notifications of when we put up new content or go live. Now, last night we did our live show, our Tuesday night live, and then we did our Patreon show after that. I had a lot of feedback. People really seem to enjoy the live shows. So you definitely want to make sure you get notice of when those come up every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. All right, let's get to the DACA today. R. Kelly, boy, this guy has wished he could fly, fly away. That's for sure. But he is not going anywhere. Anyway, he starts a trial next week, Mr. Kelly, uh, in New York. And this is in regards to the racketeering, bribery, coercion, and enticement and sex trafficking charges that he is facing. Now, Mr. Kelly's been in custody for the last two years. And so they had a pretrial uh, readiness conference. And this is not unusual. Right before you get to trial, everybody knows, all right, we're going to trial. Judge makes some final uh, orders. They go through the uh, jury selection process again, if there's any unique rules to the courtroom, any last minute issues. Here, one of the last minute issues is apparently Mr. Kelly has been uh, gaining a few pounds over the last couple of years and needs to be remeasured so that he can, uh, I guess, have his suits fit comfortably at trial. Now, usually when your uh, client is in custody, unless they provide the clothes from the family, that's right, the defense attorney has to do it. Uh, it depends uh, what you get for your client. Sometimes you send your staff off to a uh, quick trip uh, to uh, Target and get some uh, dockers and a couple of shirts to get through the trial. Um, it's always a little sad oftentimes when nobody has anybody that can be called uh, to bring to bring them uh, clothes for trial. Kind of sad when you're the only one there sitting with your client. Mr. Kelly also requested that he be granted a um, free transcript of the proceedings at no cost to him because he's now indigent and uh, these attorneys are being paid as a, a CJA counsel. So why is that significant? Well, most people don't realize this, but transcripts are expensive. Why? Well, those court reporters, they are very good at what they do, uh, particularly the ones up in the uh, U.S. District Court system, they have um, a lot of experience and they're good. So for them to do it real time, and I'm not saying they're always perfect, but they're pretty close to perfect, uh, they charge for their service, right? Because normally when you get a transcript, it's not available usually for weeks or months because the court reporter has to review it, correct any additions. Sometimes they go back and listen to an audio recording of it to make sure they got it correctly. Uh, it takes a lot of time. So every time a transcript is made, that court reporter has probably proofed and heard that trial three to four times um, by the time you get a final version of the transcript. You can pay for the real-time transcription, either A, by the court reporter, which comes as a fee, and you'll get it as it goes across the screen. There may be a couple of errors in it. 
but most of those court reporters are really good. Um, or sometimes in a civil matter, the attorneys pay for the court reporter themselves if they want it and they don't want it recorded on an electronic uh, recording device. But once again, that is very expensive. So since Mr. Uh, uh, R. Kelly has uh, been uh, indisposed the last couple of years, he has not been able to work and his resources have been depleted. But let's talk about the big issue. The court made some rulings and this is a good opportunity to talk about the rape shield statutes. Now, just about every state has a rape shield as well as the federal uh, rules uh, also have a rape shield statute. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so it used to be that when somebody was uh, an accuser of, uh, of somebody, whether male or female, and it came down to uh, going to trial, the defense attorney would be allowed to get into all of the past sexual relationships that the victim had, uh, either before that night um, or after that night. Well, that has been changed in a lot of states, even in civil uh, cases, that is no longer uh, permissible as it comes in. So in this particular case, the judge has ruled that there will not be any testimony elicited from either the prosecution or the defense, uh, in particular to a uh, uh, witness's mental health treatment that she was engaging in. We also have been told that one of the witnesses later worked as an exotic dancer um, after allegedly being accused by Mr. R. Kelly, and that is not coming in as well. So what's the purpose of Rape Shield? Well, it's there to define the night in question. Now, like all things in the law, there are exceptions to the rule. Now, the Rape Shield statute says you cannot bring in all these other instances of sexual activity with other individuals other than the victim. That's right. So if there had been an ongoing relationship with the complaining witness and the defendant, you can bring that in to show consent. You can also bring it in to show that maybe somebody else did it. So for example, there's an allegation made, there's a sexual assault kit done, and it comes back that there's say maybe semen from somebody other than the defendant, you can use that to show that it was somebody else, okay? So there's very narrow circumstances where you can get into other areas um, as it relates to sexual misconduct. However, if the witness opens up the door or the prosecution opens up the door and they basically bring their kind of good character into it and say, well, I would never have done this because I have lived a pure uh, life and I would never have engaged in such conduct, that's when the defense can then pounce with all of this type of information. This statute for the defense can be oftentimes frustrating indeed, but you have to do it. Um, it applies not only to the victims, it also applies to witnesses. And I can remember when I was a young lad, um, I thought the judge was going to leap over the bench and um, object on his own because there was conversations about a situation where there was this big party and everyone went back and people were engaging in complete debauchery, what have you. And I was questioning the witness about it and he judge told me to get up there and he's like, Mr. Reich, I thought that uh, the rape shield statute applies to witnesses as well. We had to have a hearing on this. And I'm like, oh, uh, sorry, your honor, but I got it all in. And um, ultimately that was a case where the DA dismissed after we came back from lunch, after the cross-examination of the witness. So sometimes it's actually relevant to set the scene Sometimes you have to take those chances, and when the DAs don't object, you move forward. So we'll see how that works out for R. Kelly. I think R. Kelly is going to have a difficult, difficult trial. Um, maybe he will win not guilties on a couple of counts, but I think that Mr. R. Kelly uh, needs to enjoy probably one of the last times that he'll ever wear civilian attire outside of a courtroom setting indeed. All right, next on the docket, remember McCloskey's? That's right, that's the attorney couple in St. Louis, Patricia and Mark McCloskey, who 
thought that they were being threatened because a group of protesters knocked down steel gates to get through their property on their way to uh, apparently another protest or going to protest. I think it was at the mayor's house. Well, the McCloskeys felt a little concerned that somebody was entering onto their property. Uh, Mark McCloskey went and uh, retrieved a uh, rifle and uh, Mrs. McCloskey <laughs> retrieved a small, I think, 380 caliber uh, handgun. And everybody saw it and it was on TV. Well, ultimately they were charged and uh, they both pled guilty to misdemeanor fourth degree assault and they were each fined $750,000 and um, Patricia McCloskey uh, was fined $2,000 in addition based upon her count. She also had to surrender her firearm. Well, the governor of the great state of Missouri, Mike Parson said all along that if they were convicted, he would pardon them. Well, he did so. So now the McCloskeys are free from probation. They can now honestly say that they have never been convicted as they have been given a clean slate. A couple of things about this particular case. I've said this once and I will say it many, many times in my lifetime, I'm sure. I, as somebody who has many, many firearms, um, likes firearms. I like going to shoot firearms. I like them all. Big sizes, little sizes, I like them. But as I tell my clients, you have to be super, super vigilant and responsible because although you may like guns, it may seem like a good thing to do. That's right. They complicate everything. Had the McCloskey simply stood outside and videotaped and make sure they got uh, the uh, ID of people that uh, were going across their property, they would never have been charged. But they took a gun outside and it complicated the whole situation. They were arrested. Uh, they became a household name uh, when all this started back in 2020. So don't do it. Another rule of thumb, a lot of people say, well, it's the castle doctrine. I have a right to defend my property. You do in some states and you better check in some states. But normally, but normally it only applies once somebody crosses the threshold of your residence, not the outbuildings, not the property line outside, but the threshold of your home inside. Okay. So, and I say this in jest, if something happens on the porch and a firearm is involved, oftentimes you want to drag the individual inside. <laughs> Just a joke, not counseling anybody, but I know it's going to get all those people fired up and say, I can't believe that you're telling people how to get away with crime. I'm not. It was a joke. Um, but I did have a, uh, an attorney tell me once we were talking about a client that I took over and, uh, you know, he basically said, yeah, if that guy ever comes even near my house, um, I will do something to him and drag him inside. So it's common knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, just take it for what it was a joke. All right. Now we're going to get to the real weird part of the show. This is where it just gets weird from here on out. All right. Please meet. Associate Warden Antonia Ashford. Where is she a warden, an associate warden? At the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Hey, who's there? That's right, Ghislaine Maxwell. So the person who is in charge of security for, I don't know, you know, the detention center, the protection of the inmates, well, she's been charged with murder. That's right, first degree murder. Who did she allegedly kill? Her husband, how did she do it? Allegedly shot him in the face with her weapon. See, I told you, firearms complicate everything. So you have to be smart about it. So it's alleged that uh, Miss Ashford pulled out the firearm, pointed at her husband, and then shot him in the face. Officers discovered Mr. Uh, Roderick Ashford lying unresponsive on the floor of his home where he was pronounced deceased. We're not sure if Miss Ashford is going to have any self-defense claims, or maybe she's going to claim the castle doctrine that uh, maybe the husband was in there to cause her serious bodily injury and or death. Uh, but I can guarantee you she kept her mouth shut. Hmm. It's funny how the police always know how to do that. It's always the defendants that can never do that.
All right, so that's where it gets a little strange. Now, here's a case out of Louisiana. You can't, you just can't make this stuff up. So this guy, take a look at his picture. I don't know. Apparently, he's quite successful. They refer to him as a uh, millionaire. Uh, apparently, he sold some diet pills, supplements, and things like that over the years and did pretty well for himself. And he apparently became rather cocky. That's right. Lawrence Michael Handley became rather cocky, and he wanted his wife, Shanda Handley, to disappear. So what did Lawrence do when he wanted to get rid of his wife, go down and get a divorce attorney? No, Lawrence, he's better than that. He hired a couple of uh, gentlemen to kidnap his wife, and that's where things get a little odd. Apparently, the uh, people showed up at the residence, and they were disguised as vacuum salesmen, right? Because that's normal. Vacuum salesmen come over all the time anymore. What is this, like 1962 or something? Anyway, uh, the wife, uh, Shanda, said, yeah, that's okay because my daughter and the neighbor is here. Well, they forced their way in. They kidnap Shanda. Uh, they put her in a van, tie her up, uh, and basically begin to torture her. Well, things get a little weird uh, because of a traffic jam. So the, uh, the uh, kidnappers get scared and they ultimately drive into a swampy area and begin to run when they believe that the police are after them. Well, those two kidnappers died. That's right. They passed away in the swamp. They drowned. Lawrence then was looking at face in the rap, but he did what any conniving criminal would do. He first claimed that he was not competent, and it took a couple of years to get him restored to competency or determined that he was in fact competent because this goes back to 2017. Well, he finally has taken a deal. He has pled guilty to two charges of second degree kidnapping in regards to his wife. According to the plea deal, which has been agreed to by the prosecutor and obviously uh, the defendant himself, uh, he'll plead guilty to those two counts of second degree kidnapping, which will carry a sentence of 15 to 35 years and the attempted second degree kidnapping charge will carry a maximum of 20 years. So Mr. Hadley is looking at spending some time in the pokey. I bet you he's looking back over the last couple of years and he will for the next 20 years or so and think, man, it would have been so much easier if I had just hired a divorce attorney. It's money, ladies and gentlemen. You can always make more, but you can't get your freedom back. Don't do stupid things. All right, let's take a quick recess before we go on because we've got one heck of a story after this. I Maybe I'll come up with some words. Hopefully, you'll have some descriptions to uh, leave in the comments as well. But I'm just, I'm surprised. All right, let's take a quick recess. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. Okay, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This has got to be one of the most disturbing, uh, maybe other than the story after this, um, cases that we've talked about. An Indiana woman has been charged with sexually assaulting a 16-year-old boy with autism, all right? Now, in the arrest reports, the boy's parents uh, contacted the police and they noticed suspicious activity on a surveillance camera in the boy's room. Now, the boy is nonverbal. And in the video, it is alleged that Stephanie Bradshaw, who's 47, 
is seen taking off her pants while tucking the boy into bed, turning the camera away from the bed. 30 minutes later, the babysitter returns downstairs in the home. Now, according to the police reports, the parents told the police that their son is nonverbal and they keep a camera in the room so that they can watch after him. Makes sense. Well, after seeing this particular incident, they checked for earlier footage from nights when Bradshaw had babysat the young man and found a video from the previous time that she had watched in which she again takes off her pants and then appears to have intercourse with the juvenile, autistic, nonverbal young man. In the last video, apparently, she abruptly gets off the boy and pulls up her pants uh, because the parents had arrived home. When confronted about the situation, Ms. Bradshaw uh, basically claimed that the uh, young man instigated the encounter and he's a very handsy young man. I guess a little Governor Cuomo, so to speak, yet yeah, not buying it. So ultimately, Ms. Bradshaw did admit to having sex with the victim, telling investigators that she wanted him, quote, to experience a sexual encounter, end quote. Well, now Ms. Bradshaw is going to get to experience felony charges with alleging a sexual assault with a mentally disabled individual. Not good. Um, she obviously is looking at spending significant time in prison, and she is still being held and hasn't posted bond on a $30,000 bond. Miss Bradshaw, I don't even know what to say. Why? I guess that's the only word I can come up with. Why? Because, and what you came up with it, to the police, not not cutting it with me. I'd, I'd send you away for a long, long time. Maybe not as long as this guy in this story, but wow, let's, I had never even heard of such a thing. I didn't even know that, that there was such a fetish. I've heard of shoe fetishes, feet fetishes, uh, you name it, but never this. So take a listen. A veterinarian in Florida has pled guilty to sexually abusing pets under his care and making crush videos. What the hell is a crush video? I had to figure it out. Well, apparently crush videos are where animals are trampled, stepped on, or smashed to death for someone's sexual gratification. I'm speechless. I had no idea that that was a thing. So, former veterinarian, Prentice Madden, he was the medical director of the Caring Hands Animal Hospital. Isn't that an ironic name? Like I said, he pled guilty to three counts of, that's what originally got him in trouble. And then when the FBI agents were on the computer, they found these crush videos. So he also pled guilty to one count of creating a crush video. It's apparently an illegal form. Who knew there was actually a statute there where uh, in this fetish, the crush involves watching someone on a small animal. Soft crush content apparently um, smashes invertebrates like bugs and snails. Uh, it's legal, but even people who are into this sort of weird little thing uh, generally consider the hard kind uh, to be abhorrent animal torture. Wow. Who knew? I didn't know, and I thought that I had seen it all. And remember what I've said, just when you think you've thought you've heard it and seen it all, then somebody comes up with something like this. Who knew? And I've represented some people that have done some pretty abhorrent things uh, to both humans and animals, uh, but never in such a way of this. I just don't get it. So let's get on to a little lighter story. How about a dumb criminal contestant for the day? Take a look at this genius. Lamont Walker tried to uh, rob a Walgreens in Milwaukee. And the word is tried, attempted. Apparently there was uh, no one at the cash register 
when he was trying to rob the store and get into the cash register, freaked out when an employee saw him and started running off, obviously thinking that the police would probably be close behind. What do you have to do, right? Get rid of the weapon. What do I say, right? Weapons complicate everything. Had he just run, not had to worry about the firearm, he may not be here. But what did he do? That's right, that's right. Mr. Walker throws the gun, trying to get it on top of the roof of a building so that they can't find it, maybe associated with him, but yet still being able to go back and get it later that night. Only thing Mr. Walker forgot, maybe they didn't teach him this in attempted aggravated robbery class, that um, there's video cameras everywhere. And look at this, they caught him throwing the gun onto the top of the building. Lamont Walker, you are our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Congratulations. If you are found to be the dumb criminal contestant of the week, and well, you're, you're definitely a strong contender. May not be much at aggravated robbery, but you are certainly a dumb criminal contender. That's for sure. That's right. We will send you a mug and you can do with it what you want. Don't try to beat it over a cash register. It's probably gonna break. Don't try to throw it on top of a building, but it has other purposes. You can drink from it. You could put a nice little bouquet of flowers in it because maybe you're turning a new leaf on life and being peaceful. You could do that. Just don't harm anybody with it. All right, that's all we have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say I didn't warn you that this was kind of a weird show with some wow kind of stories, but we bring it to you. We're all adults. We can listen to it. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.